So I have decided to make a tutorial on um, not camera settings, but just the basics. Uh, ISO, shutter speed, and aperture. So if you're interested in that, I just realized that uh, YouTube's been really good to me, to my career. And I don't know. I, I don't. I don't do these types of videos, but I, I don't know. There's probably amazing ones out there. I haven't looked in a long time, but this is where I picked up the basics. I started with video and realized if I want to get good at this, I really need to learn photography, actual photography. And I did. I started all over and got the basics, like I said, off YouTube. I won't say that that's where you learn it. I think that's where you get exposed to it. And it will give you the confidence to go out there and attempt to try some of these techniques yourself. And that's really where you learn is going out there and making mistakes. Going out there and making a ton of mistakes. You'll hear if you've ever seen a tutorial on cameras and yada yada they'll say it's not the gear it's not the gear and it's not it really is not the gear i know it cost me a lot of money a whole lot of money to figure that one out but i used to be kind of techie and i, don't know, I wanted the next best thing but it, none of it ever helped me just a basic t3i was my first dslr canon t3i and everyone knows what that camera is if you've been in this game for a while it's just a great beginner's camera What's funny is, is my, my son still uses it in his business for um, his real estate photography. I, well, I'm sure he uses it in weddings, all kinds of things. It's an excellent camera. <laughs> you can pick one of those up for a couple hundred dollars. Because the main thing is, is knowing, hmm, what is the main thing? Jesus, is there a main thing? So I don't know if you know the saying, you know, you got to know all the rules before you can break them. Is that the saying? Not sure, but it's something like that. Once you do understand the rules, you can break the shit out of them. Yeah, you can. So I guess that's what I'm here for. No, I don't know if it's teaching rules. Let's see, what am I here for? I basically just want to introduce you to ISO, shutter speed, and aperture. Maybe we'll get into white balance in another video. And I don't, Honestly, I don't even know if I can cover these three things in one video. They're three very basic things. And they all do the same thing, which is allow light in, but they all three have a different side effect. You could say consequence in some, in some cases, or result that maybe you're going for. <clears throat> but if you don't know what the consequences, or if you don't know what those results are by adjusting each one of these independently, then you aren't going to realize what consequences you may run into. Uh, and those three little things, as simple as they are, ISO, shutter speed, and aperture, you can spend, I'm not going to say a lifetime, you can spend a long time getting to know these things. And once they become a part of you, you don't think about them anymore. It's just like driving a car, a stick shift, a manual stick shift. Your brain doesn't have to think about gas pedal clutch, brakes, the shifter. It's just something that comes naturally. And, and if you practice this, it will come naturally. I would highly suggest, I, honestly, I don't even know how to use my camera on auto settings. I have no clue. Never used it. I was determined not to use auto settings if you're wondering what i'm doing i've been gnawing on my finger and it's not very appealing so i'm going to put a band-aid on it see isn't that better if it stays on piece of shit hopefully i explained that well and i mean this i mean this you will you will you will never become an expert by watching someone else you will really never learn anything by watching someone else. It literally comes from the process of making a ton of mistakes, beautiful mistakes. That's, I mean, my greatest photos, my, some of my greatest videos were total mistakes. I um, never intended for a scene to come out the way it did. And I, maybe I was in a timeline, I was making a video and I was just moving footage around and bam, a, 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 a clip dropped right at the beat of a song or just whatever. It was like, oh, shh. I didn't make that. You know, it was a mistake. Uh, I hate that word, but that's that's really all we have to, um, that's really all we have. I didn't I didn't do it intentionally. Um, photos are the same thing. I, I, I've had photos that I was in Lightroom, Photoshop, editing, and I would just punch in, which I, I can't even remember. I haven't done any of this in so long. Space bar, I don't remember what it is, but punch in to do a, a correction and the 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 zoom wound up being a crop that I could have never found on my own and thought well, that's a completely different photo than I took whatever I'll take it so uh, you know just play and then honestly what happens is when you discover that 
you, you it's part of your repertoire. Is that how you say that word? Those mistakes become a part of your techniques. It's like, oh, I know how I did that. I know what to look for. It's just very subtle things. It's amazing how three, four, five different people can take a picture of the same thing from the same perspective, I should say, but come up with a totally different photo. It's, it's incredible. I mean, it's not just knowing ISO, shutter speed, and aperture. It's, it's, there's timing, and my timing sucks. I am, I, I've never really been good at portraits. I enjoy headshots because I can kind of pose people in a way, but video was my thing because I didn't have to worry so much about timing. My wife incredible photographer when it comes to timing, probably struggles with ISO, aperture, and shutter speed. I mean, it's just one of those things that never came natural for her, uh, but she always makes it work. Don't know how. Sometimes I'll see her over there kind of struggling, but she always gets the shot, and I'll be honest, I could tell you anything you ever wanted to know about the technology of a camera, and if I have taken three photos that even came close to the hundreds that she's taken, I would I would be surprised because... Her timing is just something that it just comes with instinct. I don't know. I don't have it, but whatever. So I hope I don't make this too long. So we'll start off with the first thing. ISO. That stands for International Standard of Optics. Now that standard is not something, well, yeah, I guess it is something we use. But back in the day, it stood for the thickness of the film. And if I get any of this wrong, I apologize. I haven't thought about this in eight, nine years, so I may be a little rusty, but if I'm not mistaken, ISO, International Standard of Optics, and it actually represented the thickness of the film, so depending on the overcast day, or is it bright, you know, the, 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 how bright it was outside, you would use a thin film for an overcast day, and a thick film for a really bright day, to compensate, so you don't get overexposure, or you don't get underexposure, so that's what that used to be, now it's just a digital enhancement, the camera's dig digitally and artificially increasing and decreasing the amount of light that can hit the sensor, but it's doing it artificially. And it's these, these, these digital cameras, I'm still in DSLR. I don't even know if they make DSLRs anymore, but it's still all the same. It doesn't matter. The amount of ISO you can play with in these cameras are insane. I, I think this camera here probably goes up 20, 30,000. The camera above me, that camera, I don't know, hundreds of thousands. So um, that's not to say it's usable, but yeah, they can pretty much see in the dark. So that's the thing. ISO lets in light and ISO can block light. Each camera you need to know has a native ISO. I think on like the 5D Mark III, this camera here, it has a native ISO of maybe 100, I think. And the one you're looking on there is a native ISO of 850. And that doesn't mean anything to you, but natively, that is where it performs best. And I typically try to keep my ISO at those points because you can calibrate your camera with that ISO. You put a lens on it. I'm not going to get into all that, but... There's so many things to know. I'm just trying to give you the fundamentals. So then you can go out there and make these mistakes. Like I said, it's not going to make you an expert. But if you kind of know what they do and what the results are versus the consequences of changing these three things, it'll help you to say, oh, shit, I know what I did wrong. So, again, ISO allows in light, blocks light. The side effect, the results. So... As you increase your ISO, it is digitally allowing more light. You could almost say simulate hitting the sensor. The result of that is, yes, the image gets brighter, but the consequence of that is, is if you get it too bright, you allow or introduce film grain. Noise is ultimately what we call it. And it was still noise back in the day. If you overexposed a shot, old film photos, they would be grainy. So that hasn't changed. It's still the same result. And if that's something you wanted in your shot, great. Like I said, you know the rule. Now you can break it. So we'll move on to the second thing. And right, what I'm going to talk about is these first two things, is ISO and uh, shutter speed. These two things are part, they are in the body of the camera. So then we'll move on to aperture. So the shutter speed, what is the shutter speed? Sounds simple enough. It is speed in which the shutter opens to expose the sensor to light, that is the speed in which that happens. This camera here will run, you can, you can, let me see, let me turn this on. Actually, you know what, we'll just look here. 
we'll use this camera here. What is the shutter speed of this camera? One one hundredth. So I've got it set to one one hundredth. There was a reason I did that. I'll come back to that. Actually, we're going to use it now. I set it that for intentionally. Because normally what you want to run your shutter speed is double whatever your frames per second is. So in my case, I'm talking about video. If you're talking about photography. So that's where it may get confusing for people. Let's, let's, let's do two things. How do we want to do this? Because this is obviously a video. Okay. So I think it's worth talking about it. No matter what, the sh shutter speed has the same effect whether you're taking a photo or you're taking a video because all a video is is a bunch of is a series of photos per second. Same thing. In this case, if you look here on the screen, I'll just show you right here. If you can look at this, this is the shutter speed that I've got this camera set to. So on this camera, I'm running. I like to run 24 frames per second. It's just my preferred. Obviously, obviously it says 23.98 or whatever it says. Um, that's just what I like. Uh, I'm not going to get into why I like it, but that's the that's just the movie standard. I just like the way it feels. I like the way it looks. I like the glitchiness to it. And I could go further and explain why there's this glitch. I'm not going to. We're just going to stick with this. So that's what I'm running. 23.98 for filming. Remember, for filming, where, where this is not for photography. This is only for filmmaking. So that's why it's set to that. Matter of fact, this is only a film camera. Can't take pictures with it. That's this camera. And if I go into this camera, let me turn it on, flip it around. So if I go from photography, so, you know, on, a, on, a, on a, just a camera, you're not going to get the frames per second. So it's, it's not shutter speed, okay? It's, it's frames per second. It's films. It's how many photos per second you're taking for filming. But in this case, I've got it switched to this particular camera, switched to photography only. So I got, I'm set, it's set at 30 frames per second. I'm sorry. It's set at the shutter speed at, say, 1,000 there. The aperture is set at 4.0 and the ISO is at 100. But if I switch the camera to video and look at it now, now you'll see I'm at 1920. I have 24 frames per second. So that's where that option comes in. So I'm going to switch back, turn this off. If I can figure out how fucking things upside down. Since we, now that we've discussed this right here, this 24 frames per second or 23.98, just, 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 just bear with me there, okay? Just imagine it's 24. We're gonna forget about it. We're just gonna forget about that for now. For, matter of fact, forget about everything on this right hand side. You don't need to know, especially if we're just talking about ISO, shutter speed, and aperture, because we're just trying to remember the basics. Once we understand these, then they'll apply in filmmaking. They'll, they'll just make your life a whole lot easier. So I'm moving back over. So shutter speed, I have gotten mine set at one one hundredth. In filmmaking, you would never want to, mm, yeah, maybe you would. Maybe you would. Maybe you would want to do it. In this case, the reason why I did it, because I was wanting to show you what happens if what it would look like if you took a photo at this. So if you can see my hand, okay? If you can see my hand at one one hundredth of a second, my hand is still pretty much legible, right? You can see it. It's not too blurry. But if I shot, if I had this set up to where it should be uh, for what this camera was set up at 24 frames because it's a video, I would need to double the frame rate. Whatever my frames per second is, I would want my shutter speed to be double that. So if the frames per second is 24, my shutter speed should be 1 over 48. So 1 48th of a second. But before I do, I want you to see the difference. It's still legible. You know, it's not perfect, but you can see it. Let me show you. I want to show you my hand. It's still legible. It's not perfect, but you can see it. I'm going to do a side-by-side -side comparison. If you remember, this is at 1 100th. Now I'm going to, the next scene you're going to see a bit 1 48th. Okay, now it's at 148th, but you see what happened? Two things happened. My hand is a bit blurrier, and the image is a bit brighter. So why? It's easy. They all do the same thing. They all allow in more light or reduce light, but with consequences or effects, whatever you're looking for. So let's say I wanted to have a, a blurry image in a way that I wanted my image to appear that it was moving. For instance, my hand or the wheel of a car. Let's say a car is moving. If I crank my shutter speed up so high um, that I want the car to make it look like it's setting still, 
I can do that. I can crank the shutter speed up so high that I take a photo and the car doesn't even look like it's moving. But if I do that, if I crank up the shutter speed, well, what's going to happen when I do that? Think about it. The image gets darker. So I'm going to do that. We're going to switch it. So by increasing your shutter speed, you're doing two things. You are going to make the image appear, the, the image will, you will be able to see all four or five of my fingers without it being too blurry. Now, if I crank that way up, it's just going to look like this. It's going to move and it's going to look crazy low. Now, the lower, as a matter of fact, let's go to the extremes. 1 24th. Can you see my hand? So we just doubled that. We dropped it by half. So look, my hand is almost a blurry mess. But look what's happening. As I, as I decrease the shutter speed, I am allowing more light in. But what are you wanting? Are you just wanting to use it to let more light in? Or are you wanting to make the image so jello-y? You know, you would never, I would never want this shot. But if I really wanted some kind of crazy effect, right? I hate to use my hand for this example, but this is all I've got. Look at this pen. You see the how, how long these streamers are? I'm going to increase it. Okay, now look at it. It's coming a little more in view. Look, the, the, the width of that pen is half of what it was. Should be because we increased the shutter speed by double. Let's do it again. Okay, we doubled again. Now look at it. The pen's almost in perfect view. The higher I go with that number, the more detail you're going to see of this pen. It's having a hard time focusing. There it is. The pen is going to keep its resolution. It's going to keep its details. Did you see the side effect? As I increased my shutter, what happened? Two things happened. Two things always happen. No matter what you do, no matter how you adjust any one of these three things, you're always going to do one of two things. You're actually going to do two things every single time. They all three, remember, allow in light. And they all three reduce light. But each one has a very specific effect or side effect ISO if we think about it what was the side effect if I increase the ISO I increase the light but I also increase the noise so now we're on shutter speed I was able to I wasn't even trying to increase the light I was just trying to show you how an image is affected right I was trying to show you how an image um, we can show motion blur okay we can we can see take a picture of a waterfall if you want to make the waterfall look like as if it's moving well that's what you would use you would use the shutter speed to show movement to show life if you want to film if you want to photograph a hummingbird in mid-flight well shit if i try to shoot a hummingbird at 1 48th of a second i wouldn't even see its wings they wouldn't even be there I would have to crank it up maybe one three thousandths. I don't even know. Way, way up there. But but if I do that, if I want to see those wings in the air stuck, I would have to. The only choice I have is to increase the shutter speed. The problem is by doing that, I'm limiting the amount of time. Let's say I go up to one three thousandths per second to allow this bird's wings to be stopped in the air or a horse racing. That means that the shutter is only going to be exposing light, if I set it at one three thousandths of a second, one three thousandths of a second, that quickly. Here, let me give you an example. <clears throat> this is going to be really difficult for you to hear. So what we're going to do is, is we're going to go to the extreme. If you can see this, it's 8,000. I don't know what's making that noise. What the hell? They don't like it. Whatever, I'm going to leave it. So if you can see that, that is, I'll try to center it up. That is eight thousandths of a second. I'm going to fire it. You can hear that, right? That doesn't sound very fast, but I'll promise you it's fast. Now we're going to go the complete opposite way. We'll get down here to about 30. 30, one thirtieth of a second. You can hear it getting slower. We'll go on down to about one-fifth of a second. Okay, you hear it getting slower? Obviously, you can hear it getting slower. So we're taking longer exposures now. If you took a picture of it like that, everything would be blurry as hell. But if you want to take pictures of the night sky, come in here and take a picture six-second photo. 
five second. Th- oh, I'm sorry. Here's a four second photo. These are half seconds. So this is a four second photo. If you keep going, you can go all the way to a 30 second photo. And if you can see that, you can see it's digitally trying to suggest. You can see how bright that is too. It's trying to say, hey, I'm trying. I'm. It's digitally trying to give you a, a simulation of what the image would look like if you took it. But a 30 second photo. A long time you can take pictures at night and see the entire galaxy 30 seconds is super long time i would rarely need a 30 second photo it's got to be super dark to do that and the camera cannot move that's a whole nother thing that's there's a thousand tutorials out there on how to use these things um, i don't want to get into all of them i mean you just, you just got to go play with it take a bunch of pictures when they come out blurry you'll be like why you go back and dig so that's shutter speed like i said it lets in light but what would you use shutter speed for? Like I said earlier, it would be to to capture an image and and and, and to my, try to make it a look like it was moving. Like I said again, a waterfall, or if you want to freeze frame a waterfall, or a butterfly, or a, a hummingbird. So that's what you would use shutter speed for. The side effect is it lets in too much light. So you have to compensate for that. What would you use? Would you turn your ISO down? Or would you close down or stop down your aperture? So we'll move on to aperture. We get all three of these things out of the way. So again, ISO it allows in light, increases film grain whenever you do that by increasing it. Shutter speed allows in light, but then increases, or I should say decreases, as you allow in light with the shutter speed, it decreases motion blur. Pretty simple. Okay, we move on to the third thing. And this is probably the one thing that will confuse people the most. The other two, I'll come up with ISO first because it's easy. Super, super simple. Shutter speed, pretty simple. You know, that's the one you would use a lot. A lot. It's a quick one. That's the one you just rack on the end of your camera. It's too bright. You crank it to the right and you dim it down. By cranking it down, you are, what the hell are you doing? You're decreasing motion blur. See, even I get stuck. I apologize. So by, 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 by racking it down this thing here, this guy here, let me go to the top, this guy here. All right, let's look and see what it says. All right, I'm cranking it up eight thousandths of a second. See that? Eight thousandths of a second. We'll go back down. We'll scroll the other way. So by doing that, you are, if you're increasing it, you are knocking down the amount of motion blur you're going to have, or you're going to decrease the amount of motion blur you're going to have. And you're going, to in, you're going to decrease light as well. So, side effect. If you open it up, or if you slow it down, you're going to increase light, but you will also, just think about it this way. The f-stop, if you increase the light by lowering it, you're going to also increase motion blur. If you crank it up really high, Say so one five hundredth of a second, one two thousandths of a second. Those are bright days. As you crank it up, you're going to decrease motion blur. Maybe that you never want a picture that ever looks blurry. I mean, most pictures you don't want blurry. And if you're posing someone, well, shit, it don't matter. You don't care. That's where the artsy fartsy stuff gets in. So for the most part, starting out, you're going to want your your image to not be moving. Especially if they are moving around a little bit and it's a really bright day, shoot, crank that thing up, man. It doesn't really matter. But if you got a waterfall in the background, you're at, and you want to take a longer exposure, you want to see that water look like it's moving, you know, you got you to gotta make decisions here. But that's what it does. Moving on to the third thing. And the third thing is not even in your camera. It is in the lens. It is called the aperture, the f-stop. It's the speed of a lens. That's what they say. So if that gets confusing, all that means is, okay, so this is what I've decided to do. I've realized this video is way too long. I'm going to try to shorten it up as much as possible, but aperture's too important. They're all important, but ISO is pretty simple. Um, let's just get you out of a, a bind. F-stop's pretty simple, but aperture... It, it, is the thing that really I believe confuses people the most. It's the I can tell you this. It's the is the thing I spend the most amount of time explaining to people. So I'm gonna leave it with that. Cut this here and make a part two, and then just really go in deep on on aperture, and then show you the side effects, and then kind of using the three together. So thank you. Hope to see you in the next video.